for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heather, would you please take roll? Councilmember Bachman. Here. Councilmember Beaton. Here. Councilmember Lundberg. Here. Mayor Sullivan. Here. Councilmember Pratt. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Grabowski. Here. Councilmember Martin Pontiac. Here. City Manager. Here. DPW Director. Here. Finance Director. Here. Police Chief. Here. Fire Chief. Here. City Engineer. Here. Okay. Uh, one second. City Attorney. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Roll call complete. Thank you. Public hearings, we have none. Citizens' comments on agenda-related items. I probably don't have to be here. I'm Liz Lasky, 537 Forest Street. And I was coming just for the parks because we were trying to get someone to attend each meeting, just to work in collaboration. But when I looked at the agenda, I did see that you'd be um, Considering that text amendment to the zoning ordinance, and I don't know how many of you were at the hearing and at the meeting, but it, um, <coughs> the taxpayers and the residents resoundedly <coughs> wanted it to stay as it was, and the planning commission concurred with that. Roger Yoder, as Roger says, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And it did go 6-0, one person was absent. So I'm just asking you to um, consider that recommendation of your commission and they also brought out that maybe the timing wasn't right I mean we have quite a bit of affordable housing the vacancies are still since December in every complex around town and we've got 280 on Kennedy 167 at Filer 20 that are already at Washington um, old school that we have close to 500 in the works so in 2023 we made great strides so if you would just Consider leaving it as it was, as the Planning Commission recommended. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Ruth Pratt. I live at 463 Fourth Street. I'm here for the same reason. I attended um, two of the meetings that was done by the Planning Commission. And I have to say, those guys do a terrific job. I come to a lot of council meetings, but not so much the planning commission meetings. I thought they were thorough. I thought they asked good questions. I thought they were very smart in their forward thinking. And I feel that if you people vote after they voted no, if you people vote to do that in the R2 district, it's a little bit like a slap in the face for the work that they do. And I've come to a lot of council meetings in my lifetime, but I've never seen a presence where the planning commission has voted something down and the city council has tried to pass it. So I'm just asking that you think about what you're doing and think about what the people want who live here every single day. Thank you. Hello, I'm Laura Kaser, 582 8th Street here in Manistee. And um, I'm reading from a uh, page that somebody in the audience was too scared to come up here and read. So here I go. Um, it starts, I seem to remember reading in the newspaper that city council voted to accept the planning commission's recommendation to keep the special use for duplexes in our two districts as is. I was surprised to read on the, in the March 6th edition of the News Advocate, buried on page seven, at the end of the article, that members are expected <coughs> to consider a text amendment to the zoning <coughs> to allow for the use of a duplex as a permitted use in the R2 medium density residential district. That's a straight quote from the paper. The Planning Commission did what they were supposed to do, listen and respect the opinions of the constituents and recommended accordingly. Do not change the wording of the ordinance. 
The fact that it's brought back makes us wonder who's putting pressure on our local government governing boards and why. Do the citizens of Manistee need to recall their council members and elect local politicians who will actually represent people and vote as the people requested? Democracy started at the grassroots. I hope those on the council will not be swayed by outsiders, big money, and sweet talk that will harm the rest of us in the process. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, Jeff Dance, 405 East Cott Road, uh, County Board Chair, but I'm here tonight wearing my chairman for the EDC, uh, Economic Development Council. Uh, you got a presentation coming up this evening. What I wanted to emphasize to everybody here from attending council meetings over time, we have a report that gets sent out to everybody every month. This has been going on for a few years now. It used to be a little bit larger. I know sitting in your chair, from sitting on the county, in the county chair, that you get, could be 150, could be 175, could be 300 pages. This gets condensed. I'll, I'm kind of a believer, less is more. So you're seeing something that comes across your desk about once, well, it comes across once a month. Page, maybe two at the most. I encourage you to read that. I also want to emphasize that about 80% of our time is spent within the city boundaries, and probably about 65 to 70% was within the DDA district. <coughs> I want to emphasize that because as we have discussed in years past, the county has upped our uh, allocation to $40,000. The city's still at 20. I would also encourage you to consider that, upping that um, to match the county for your next budget cycle for the coming up in June. With that, I thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, Madam Mayor, um, Council Members. My name is Sammy Lukaskevitz. I'm the Executive Director of the CVB. I live at 315 Fifth Ave, number 23. Um, I'm gonna present some tourism numbers uh, down the line when I have a uh, accurate reflection of that, but I wanted to thank you for your support of business in Manistee County, and also thank the work of the group from Economic Development. CVB has doubled its donation to, toward economic development, so I would encourage you to consider that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Moving on to consent agenda. All items marked with an asterisk on the consent agenda are considered by the city manager to be routine matters. Prior to approval, any member of council may have an item removed and taken up during regular portion of the meeting. Items include approval minutes, cash balances, revenue and expenses, notification regarding next study session, consideration of 2023 Manistee National Forest Festival events, consideration of the 2023 Labor Fest event. At this time, council could take action to approve the consent agenda as presented. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll second. second. Discussion? Heather, could you please take roll? Council Member Bachman. Yes. Council Member Beaton. Yes. Council Member Lumberg. Yes. Mayor Sullivan. Yes. Council Member Pratt. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Grabowski. Yes. Council Member Martin Pontiac. Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Consideration of an agreement to participate in the Manistee County Household Hazardous Waste Program. The City of Manistee has participated in the Manistee County Household Hazardous Waste Program for many years. This pro the program provides residents an avenue to safely dispose of hazardous materials. This event is typically held on County Road Commission on the third Saturday in August. This year is scheduled for Saturday, August 19th, 2023. The request includes a $2,525 payment from the city based on population. At this time, council could take action to approve a contract with Manistee Mason Lake and Oceana Conservation Districts and authorize the city manager to execute the agreement. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Heather, would you please take roll? Council Member Bachman. Yes. Council Member Beaton. Yes. Council Member Lundberg. Yes. Mayor Sullivan. Yes. Council Member Pratt. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Grabowski. Yes. Council Member Martin Pontiac. Yes. 
Motion approved. Thank you. Consideration of the 2023 Smoke on the Water event, Salt City Rock and Blues in conjunction with Authentic 231 pr proposes to hold a day-long music festival with on-site alcohol and cannabis consumption on Saturday, July 29th, 2023. Music would start at 5 p.m. and continue until 11.30 p.m. in the Lions Pavilion area, Douglas Park and First Street Beach and Boat Launch. Parking lots will also be used during this event. This is a 21 and older event with IDs being checked at both the main gate and the entrance to the cannabis sales and consumption area. Food trucks will be staged on the circular drive immediately adjacent to the venue. At this time, council could take action to approve the Saturday, July 29th, 2023 smoke on the water event and authorize the consumption of marijuana on a public property in a controlled area in accordance with MCL 33.2795E and the city ordinance 867.14 subject to appropriate departmental approvals. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Second? I'll second. second. Any discussion? I just have a comment, Mayor. Last year I voted against this based on citizens requests in my neighborhood. This year I got no citizens asked me to vote against this and I think that the event was well last year so I'm going to vote in favor of it this year. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, were there any issues with it? I don't recall hearing anything. No. So, Yeah, I would love to yeah. hear what. Yeah, we reported shortly after the event last year uh, <coughs> a number of law enforcement officers and other licensing officers on site. There were no issues, uh, no arrests related to it. Uh, by all accounts, it was pretty well run from checking IDs to making sure any of the products, alcohol, leave the venue. It was run pretty well this year. Zero issues. Did we get, uh, didn't they think we're going to get like 10,000 people or something? What, what was, do you know, do you know what the? It wasn't 10,000 people. <laughs> uh, he remembered them saying. I don't know what the number was. Maybe it's going to be a lot. Do you remember? Any numbers? Hi, I'm Bob Ogilvy representing Salt City Rock and Blues. Based on our ticket sales, I'm thinking we probably had around 12 to 1,300 people there. Okay. Um, I was not able to attend. I had COVID three days before, so so I didn't get to attend, but okay. that was based on ticket sales. And you did limit the number of ticket sales, did you not? We capped it at 2,000, but that didn't okay. take place. That's, and is, is it going to be capped for this year as well? I'm going to defer to that one. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, based on the density of the people that we had there, I think they could it could definitely handle at least double the amount of people. I, I have some pictures here, um, some overhead pictures. From the event. You'll see 15, you know, it also it helps that it's spread out over such a long period of time, long period of time that people yeah. kind of filter in and out. But other than the cannabis line being extremely long <laughs> due to some internet issues that we had there, um, you know, it was, it was not very densely populated. So, so 2,000 is still a safe number that you would cap it at? Uh, if the council requested me, then yes, I would do that. We would prefer to increase it a little bit if possible. The finances around running a cannabis event are extremely expensive. It was not a profitable endeavor last year, so we do need to get more tickets sold to bring more people in. I understand that, but having a finite number helps us plan ahead. 3,000? Chief I'm gonna interject here. I'm, I would love to see us get 3,000, but I don't think we will. We had a wonderfully attended event at Labor Fest where we probably had several thousand people, and that's probably the best that we have seen as far as attending an event in probably a decade. So if we were to get 2,500 people, I would be ecstatic, but I'm not sure that would Looking happen. at in terms of planning, I'd feel comfortable with 3,000 people. What I want to avoid is somehow this blowing up and we have 5,000 people and we don't have a way to plan for that. I right, mean, that's what I'm trying to do too. We plan the best we can, but I would feel comfortable with 3,000 people capped. So uh, if we did 3,000, would we have to increase officers or police presence or think that based on the- We already have officers working overtime for this event. We have other staff working overtime, so. Right, but I'm saying like based off of last year's numbers, if we increased the cap, if there was to be like, let's say you sold 3,000 tickets. I would probably keep the staffing the same. Okay, yeah. Okay. And also, both uh, Authentic 231 and Salt City Rock and Blues um, hire private security. Okay. okay. Well, I would still like it capped at 3,000, mm -hmm. if that's okay with you. That's great for us. We appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. So, how do we need to do that? Like, vote on this one and then vote to... 
Um, what you want to do, uh, well, yeah, you can include that in the motion, um, the approval conditioned on 3,000 being the cap um, for the amount of attendees at this, but you're gonna wanna make sure to that you're approving both the event and the consumption of marijuana uh, pursuant to the state law. Okay. So would they approve their original motion that they have and then do an amended a motion? Amend the motion to add the cap of 3,000? Can we just amend well, you the can motion all do it cap of 3,000? Well, they, yeah. they already have a motion on the table, though. Yeah. Oh, you do? They already um, have a motion on the table. You can withdraw you, the motion and redo it. Okay. If you'd agree to amend your motion and then the second the motion could Linda yeah. amend the motion saying she amends right. it to so if we amend cap it at 3,000. Yes. I'd love to yes. amend it to cap it at 3,000. I'd like to make a motion to amend it. I'll second. Who was the second? Me. Okay. Do we have to approve the original motion though? Not yet. We will. We'll vote so. <laughs> And that was, um, excuse me, that what the amendment was to cap? To cap the, the ticket, ticket sales, sales at 3000 Attendance actually, right? Attendance at 3000 Well, I might buy a ticket and not show up and insult somebody else, right? Still. <laughs> we'd probably give it to <laughs> We'll get to it. Okay, so we'll do the first vote will be on the amend the amendment to add the 3000 mm -hmm. okay and then the second vote will be okay. on the amended motion to include that okay can you take roll for the first one okay council member bachman yes council member beaton yes. council member lundberg yes mayor sullivan yes council member pratt yes mayor pro tem grabowski yes council member martin pontiac yes Motion approved. Thank you. And then to, Good luck. to vote on the oh. amended. Yes. The motion as amended. Yes. Excuse me. Council Member Bachman. Yes. Council Member Beaton. Yes. Council Member Lundberg. Yes. Mayor Sullivan. Yes. Council Member Pratt. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Grabowski. Yes. Council Member Martin Pontiac. Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Consideration of the text amended to the zoning ordinance for the approval of the language to amend the zoning ordinance to allow for use of a duplex as a permitted use in the R2 medium density residential district. Currently a duplex is allowable use as a special use within the R2 district. The planning commission voted not to recommend approval of this amendment. At this, as an ordinance, two separate readings are required. If this ordinance is introduced at this time, it could be adopted at the next regular meeting. At this time, council could take action to introduce the proposed text amendments to the zoning ordinance. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. A second. Any discussion? Other uh, would? Go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. I have a question, if we can back up to discussion. Can we ask how this got passed along to council? Because I'm pretty confused after attending two of the planning commission meetings, why this is even on our docket. So Katie's not here, it doesn't look like, but do the Planning Enabling Act. So the Planning Commission recommends, but it still has to come to council for consideration. So they didn't recommend, they recommended, um, they did not recommend approval, but then council can not approve it. So, so it just no has to come to council. This, I'm sorry? And no vote on this means we leave the zoning ordinance the way it is. Correct. Yep. Okay. I just, I just like to point out that it was implied that somehow we're bending to political and financial pressure from someone to pass this in advance and someone already made the, made the assumption we we're going to pass this in advance. I think that's an a insulting statement personally. I think the Planning Commission did a great job as these people on the audience said and I intend to support their, their recommendations and I, I certainly am insulted that someone would think that we're somehow bending to the will of some money someplace or some developer if not the case. I, I think and I could be wrong, but based on being at the Planning Commission meeting, I think most people in the attendance just assumed it was a done deal since they voted no. So I think maybe that person was confused. I don't know how that got started. I'm a little confused it's on our docket because it's not something I've typically seen where it's voted down and then it shows up on a council. 
I it question legally you know, has to today. come before us, right? And, and I attended, I was at the planning commission meeting that was in the basement, but um, you know, there, and she did state at the meeting that it, she would refer uh, their recommendation to council because it does have to go to council still. Well, at the first meeting, she didn't realize that if you tabled it, it had to be voted on at the second meeting. So I don't think that was very clearly explained to the audience. Yeah, because that's what, so. and, and I did catch that because, you know, she did say that it would have to be referred to council. Okay. But it, in this had happened at a previous meeting as well where it came to council, but then there was actually no motion from council. It was just, but it's just a kind okay. of a formality. Okay. That's with anything that's to do with um, ordinance? For any amending if it's passed or not passed that's just yep. everything right it's brought to us it's under the zoning enabling act if the planning commission makes a recommendation on uh, a zoning ordinance amendment mm -hmm. uh, it goes to council if they if their recommendation goes to council then council takes it up at the next meeting okay. it's there yeah anybody else Heather, would you please take roll Councilmember Bachman? No. Councilmember Beaton? No. Councilmember Lundberg? No. Mayor Sullivan? No. Councilmember Pratt? No. Mayor Pro Tem Grabowski? No. Councilmember Martin Pontiac? No. Motion failed. Thank you. Uh, now we will have a report from Stacy Bightwork and Mark Miller on the Massey Area Chamber of Commerce, Commerce Economic Development and Downtown Development Authority. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Thank you for having the Chamber here this evening. Um, I'll make this short and sweet because I know you are all busy and you have a lot on your docket. So thanks for having the Chamber here this evening. Um, we're going to come kind of present on our year in review and just hit a couple of the highlights from 2022. So with that, I'll jump right in. Um, so our team is all here tonight. So. Carmen and Cassidy are in the back, um, and Mark Miller is right behind me. So Mark's our Director of Economic Development, Carmen's our Operations Manager, and Cassidy Jessup is the newest addition to our team at the beginning of last summer and does all our marketing and communications for the Chamber. Um, our Board of Directors, Dennis McCarthy, is our Board Chair, and then we do have a, a diverse Board of Directors from all sectors. Um, we try to make sure that we have that um, so that we can lead um, the business community and have a different voice at the table. We're happy to have Bill Gamble, our city manager on the Chamber Board of Directors. Um, it's a nice um, communication with City Council and then a working partnership with um, the Chamber Board. And then Kelly uh, Tomaszewski is in the audience today as well as Jeff Dance, um, who are also on our board. Um, so I just want to point out positive impacts is the chamber. So we have a bulleted list there and those are the things, the key things that our chamber um, wants to have an impact on this community. So everything we do ties into a lot of those key things. We are big vision. We want to see this community grow. Um, we want to attract talent. We want a beautiful downtown. We don't focus on the minutia. We focus on the big picture. And that's why we want to work with all of you because I understand, you know, it's not easy being a council member and a lot of things get thrown at you. But we want to work in partnership with the chamber and your leadership in looking at big vision um, and looking forward for this community for generations and to be competitive in the state. Um, we uh, are still underdeveloped in our community, and I think we have a lot of opportunity, but we've got to all work together to get to that next level. Um, communication is one thing the Chamber prides ourselves on, so I'm going to give some kudos to Cassidy for that. We spend a lot of time on our communications and trying to really make sure that we're getting our information out in all different areas. Um, we had 29 new chamber investors in 2022, so that's really key and exciting to have new people join the chamber and be excited about the mission and what we're doing. Um, if you look at all those different avenues from our e-blast to our newsletters to social media, so I think Mr. Dont spoke on that. We do submit um, monthly reports, but we also put a lot of that out on different avenues. So if you miss something, um, you have my phone number, my email, I'll have coffee with you and I'm happy to talk to you about different things going on. But we really pride ourselves on trying to get all the information and what we're doing for our investors the business community out to everybody. 
Um, I want to touch on some local, regional, and state representation. Um, I actually just got a text right now from one of my colleagues at the Northern Michigan Chamber Alliance who said, hey, the governor just said hi. So these are things that um, the governor knows who Manistee County is, so I think that's really important. Um, the administration knows, our legislators know, because we're working on all these different boards that there's a lot of crossover through locally, state, and regional representation that I think is really important. So that's why I look to you locally that you know, everything we're doing, whether it's in Lansing or on all these boards, it's extremely important because Michigan is actually really small and everyone's very connected, so I want Manistee County to shine, so having um, you know, myself on some of these boards and as well as Mark Miller on Housing North, these are things that are important to the chamber and kind of furthering the growth of this community. Um, so one of the main things is why your Chamber of Commerce is here is local advocacy. So it's, sometimes it's not always a tangible thing that we can grab, but it's extremely important to have a voice. And like I mentioned in Lansing on different boards um, with our regional partners and just locally. So um, these are, you know, we started a candidate forum last year because we had some contested races. So I see two of you up here, so congratulations. <laughs> but um, those are some things that we wanna keep, you know, um, kind of getting you out in front, letting our business community know what you plan to do and how you plan to lead our city. So that's something we will continue this year. Um, for 2023, so just an FYI, um, we had a good turnout of that event. Other things we get a lot of is um, letters of support. There's a lot of businesses or organizations that want the chamber, um, their credit to kind of support what they're doing. So I put some city specific things that we did support through the chamber this year. Um, regional and state advocacy, so we talk local, it all begins locally, so we know a lot of the decisions are key decisions that are made at a local level, but we need to take that up regionally and state, and so a lot of the things that we're doing is we're in Lansing advocating, we're working with MISHTA, we're working with MEDC, so trying to have that partnership and bringing all that back and trying to find more investment and working with the state to bring that home is extremely important, and again, it, it, it comes home here first. And so if we're all working cohesively together as a community, they're watching us. If we're not, then our competitors on either side of us are gonna get funds. And we're already kind of an underdog to what our population, but that's what we're trying to do is grow this community and seek more investment and attract talent. Um, economic development is another one of our key priorities. So I, I wanna touch on, you know, recruiting and bringing investment to this city and just the county as a whole, but specifically city. I think a huge win we had in 2022 was uh, ribbon cutting with the Hillcrest Village Apartments. That was a collaboration with the city, Little River Holdings, the Chamber, um, Hollander Development Cor Corporation, and other partners to really bring that housing project here. And that is extremely important for the business community because they need housing for their employees. If they don't have housing for their employees, they can't attract talent. We can't go to the hospital. We can't um, have coffee. I mean, those are key things that we need to watch out for the business community and trying to find adequate housing for people in this community. So that was a huge win. Um, the other thing I wanna point out is the Hampton Inn and Suites um, down by the beach. That is a huge investment that is gonna bring an upwards of $17 million into this community to support small business and everything we do. That is dollars that we're not capturing now. So their investment, bringing that here is huge and that actually helps infrastructure within the city. It may have been controversial, but if we look at the overall impact that that's gonna have for everybody that lives here, it's extremely important. Um, so I'll, there's a lot of other things that we're doing, but those are the two that I wanted to touch on. Um, and then for redevelopment of blighted sites and our, uh, our redevelopment sites that we work on, for Conos, um, when we started um, taking on economic development, that was our first priority site through the MEDC. And that's, I mean, looking at what it was to what it is today, this will be the first summer that it's open in 2023. And there was a lot of money invested in that project. So I wanna thank the city because I know there was a lot of collaboration with the city and tried to get that project going. And I know Mark and uh, probably Ted have made a big uh, bonding friendship over that because they spent a lot of hours together really trying to make that um, project come together. Um, another thing that Chamber really uh, priority area is our leadership program. We're in our ninth year of that. So come September, we'll be in our 10th cohort. 
I see a couple leadership graduates in the audience today. So Lucas and Kelly, and if I missed anybody else, I apologize. But um, it's, oh, Alex, sorry. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so um, that's a really neat program because it's really showcasing everything in this community from healthcare to tribal government to education, everything we need to make this community grow. And it's really great that we have organizations and employers really put their people in there, whether they're young professionals new to the community or they've lived here all their life. I've heard more times than not, I grew up here, but I didn't know this existed. Thank you for giving us the opportunity. And then they also work collaboratively together for a community project, Big Day of Serving. So um, the class that graduated in May, um, all those nonprofits, they were able to support with over $5,000 in different projects in the community. So I want to commend them for that. And then this um, leadership class this year is they're doing a life vest loaner station. So that is something they're working on the Coast Guard with. I know Chief Glass has been involved as well. And they're working with other townships in the city. So that's a really neat project that they've really prided themselves on. So we're excited about that program and continue to building leaders that are could potentially be in your seats someday or um, any other boards around um, the area. Um, the other priority area for the Manistee um, Chamber is the Downtown Development Authority. We've had that contract since September of 2020. Um, I, we've put the mission up there because I think that's important and I think we're working on all that is, you know, economic growth, really trying to promote an attractive downtown. So I want to thank Mark, the city, and especially Bill for his um, work and support on the Riverwalk. That's a huge asset that this community has that really we're highlighting and able to secure over $850,000 to put into that river walk to really make us shine because that's something we have that other communities don't that can really make us stand out. So we're happy about that. And then also the DDA is working um, on a new streetscape plan. So, I mean, our infrastructure is old. We need to kind of bring our community up to kind of where our partners are around in the state. So I think that's an opportunity. We also had a uh, 2022 clean audit. So Carmen Cott back there, our operations manager, <coughs> is a detail person, that's really good. So I commend her for having a clean audit for the DDA. Um, the social district is another thing that we added that um, you can see up there over 20,000. Um, cups and labels were distributed in partnership with those that are, and that was really started, I think, you know, through the state because you think about COVID and everything that happened and it was, it was able an opportunity to keep people coming into downtown, you know, with shortages of staff that eliminated kind of that waiting in line, that burden on restaurants and it really kind of engaged people to enjoy our downtown and see everything that we had to offer. The other key thing I think with um, the DDA is facade grants, going back to that attractive downtown, is really working with business owners and matching to try to help them bring their facades up. And they've administered $38,000 in grants. And then Cassidy works with a board member um, on the downtown business connection meeting just to keep open lines of communication with the businesses, what's going on with the city, the chamber, and any happenings in the area just so there's an open platform for people to talk on that. I do want to say uh, Bruce um, is here from the DDA tonight as well and if anybody else is here that I didn't see I apologize but um, we were really happy to have that contract and work with uh, um, that board and really trying to push forward for the downtown. And then Bill as well also sits on that board. So again, it's a nice to have open lines of communication and have Bill there as well. Um, I just wanna highlight some of these um, signature programs and events that the chamber does. Uh, one is our awards gala that's coming up uh, this Friday to showcase the business community organizations. We have a lot of great nominees from the city and beyond and really excited. I know a couple of you are attending, Mayor and um, Council Member Beat, or um, Lundberg, sorry. <laughs> um, so I'm really happy to have both of you in attendance and hopefully next year we'll have all of City Council because it's a really great event to celebrate our community. Um, you, the chamber, you see in the Forest Fest is on there. That's something that we um, have the umbrella for that event, a big um, Independence Day celebration for our community. Golf outing, that's another thing, just a key thing. We've been selling out of that. It's a really great way to connect the business community and get everybody involved. And then just um, Chamber Untapped, just kind of wanted to highlight that at the Ramsdale. We had our um, holiday one with um, 
the Festival of Trees, so Lakeside Club. Um, that was really cool to be able to partner with them on that, but that was our biggest turnout of over 200 people at that. So really, I think our, overall our community is just really becoming engaged, so it's really nice. Um, and then the last um, uh, set of pictures I want to showcase is uh, Julia Sullivan Cook through the Vogue, um, kind of the founder of the Manistee County Christmas, which came out of COVID, gave the community something exciting to look forward to, worked um, with Cassidy this year with the chamber to continue to really um, kind of excite the community over the holidays and bring everybody together. So with that, before I close, I just wanna thank all of you as council members and your leadership because we all gotta to work together and move forward and look at big vision because we've got a lot of opportunity community and I really hope that you as leaders on council um, I've had fortunate to have a couple of really great meetings with the mayor so I want to thank you personally for being open and willing to speak with the chamber thank you so with that I feel like talked really fast so do you have any questions <laughs> I, I like your leadership program yeah I seen the last two I didn't see any city employees in there I see city employees golfing yeah, they like to golf. I encourage the city department heads and the city manager to get our employees at least one in every one I of those classes. I think have had in the past. DPW, I think, has sent Bruce, three. Bruce was in there. And yeah. I think I can see police, fire, city hall staff. Yeah. I, I think it's a good connection, and we should encourage that to happen. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So aside from monetary um, that Mr. Dance had kind of brought up about maybe increasing our contribution, I guess, how else can we support your efforts? Uh, well, one of the things is a lot of developers that are coming in just supporting um, new growth and development. Um, you know, we're, Mark's working really hard with a lot of um, investment that wants to come in this community. And part of one of those positive impacts with the chamber is trying to roll out the welcome mat, make things easier you know, make the process easier because we gotta remember these are business people, they're leading businesses and um, time can be limited. So you may get us in front of you instead of them, but don't fault them for that, but really try to work with them um, because the development world's very small, very tight. So if, you know, someone has a bad experience that gets out there. So we've tried really hard to make the a positive and so yeah I, that's a great question so if you can continue to work with us and have um, kind of an open mind mm -hmm. and you know try to make that process easy thank you okay. thank you hey concerns and comments citizens comment this is an opportunity for citizens and attendants to comment on municipal activities or areas of city involvement limited to five minutes letters submitted to council will not be publicly read okay mr gamble thank you mayor <clears throat> so the tree commission recommended a view shed policy i'll be I'll review that with george and jeff and we'll be doing a general policy i think kind of a try it out um, so i'll be writing that up and uh, we'll have an avenue for those types of requests. Will we get a forward. chance to look at that before it's implemented? Yeah, I could send that to council, a draft. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. I thought a couple months ago I asked and you guys said it was already being reviewed. So has it been written or not yet? No, so I said that we would be reviewing it in the next month or two, and so we reviewed it, and then, yeah, we'll be, <coughs> it will be written. I talked to George before he left. So, and then the other update, birds, scooters, they... they um, are doing an indefinite pause, so they won't be deploying this spring. Just want to give council an update. Uh, I think they're having issues with flying, finding a reliable fleet manager and some other things. So, um, but they, I think, retracted from some other markets as well. All right, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? As many of you are aware, uh, the city police department's investigated some recent breaking and entering complaints in recent months. Uh, while I commend our officers for solving the majority of these crimes, identifying suspects, recovering property, uh, there has been feedback from the public in regards to what can the city police do with these juveniles and what can city council do with these juveniles. And so um, the detention and prosecution of juveniles is a, a function of county government, uh, not a local level. 
Uh, we spoke about this in depth Friday at Public Safety Committee meeting uh, where Senator Bumstead was there. So you heard the majority of that conversation. Uh, I plan to meet with him again this Friday. So my ask to you is our elected officials locally just to continue to raise awareness if you could. And when you get the ear uh, of an um, elected official, help raise awareness so we can find funding for juvenile detention facilities in these cases where uh, we have violent juvenile offenders or repeat juvenile offenders. So that's my ask that you would help me, assist me in raising awareness. Josh, is it safe to assume that you had a repeat offender and you tried to get him lodged, you were unsuccessful mm -hmm. then? That is a very is safe. How we, how we read between the lines here? So, yes, and, and it's my responsibility as a law enforcement leader to continue to work with the prosecutor's office in juvenile courts, and we continue to do that for strategies. But much like mental health resources, it's not a local function. So what you can do for those facilities as well as these facilities is, is join me, help to raise awareness to our state reps, federal, whatever it takes. Uh, when you get the ear of a politician, just. Uh, Help me raise some awareness. I hate to put you on the spot, but I couldn't read between the lines to figure out were there no beds available or did the prosecutor's office not want to commit that individual? And if you don't want to put on the spot, just say, I'll get back to you. So I, I think it's an issue with ultimately with resources. And so what happens is I found that when you put all this effort forward, right, and then at the end of the investigation, whatever it might be, the emergency hearing, there's no bed available. I think the natural reaction is that job performance starts to tailor off. And I want to avoid that. That's why I'm working with the prosecutor's office, working with the court system to try to improve those services. But as my local elected officials join me to raise public awareness so we can get funding for these detention facilities. Josh, I see that Travers wants to build a juvenile facility. Are we involved to contact them at all? I think our ju we being our, ju our county juvenile probation department is, is involved at some level. Okay. Again, they are c constantly, along with us, trying to develop strategies, get involved, uh, because we, we have to find solutions for these things. So again, and I want to be clear to the public that we're not talking about juvenile crime. We're talking about select violent juvenile offenders or repeat offenders that uh, victimize our community. I know when I had to transport my medical weight to Sault Ste. Marie to find a bed. We are becoming increasingly efficient at transporting people everywhere. In fact, we went today for mental health transport. So, and we've made that commitment as a law enforcement agency uh, that we'll transport them. We just need a bed to put them and make sure that we're prosecuting in an efficient manner and we're all continuing to. Sure that he's going out of state to find that place. We have had a case that is not, not we, but a case that was transferred from Manistee County ended up going to Florida. So that gives you kind of an idea of what the resources look like at that level. So that's it. That's what I want to ask. So. Have any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Mr. Pratt. Um, I appreciate the trim for review or policy update. I was going to ask about that. And I guess the only other thing, um, I guess I have two things. Uh, communication still seems to be a large area of concern. Um, I don't know how, but we, we have to look at ways to improve that. We have to look at ways to improve that to the council. We have to look at ways to improve that to residents. It seems like we're communicating really well with potential businesses and business owners, but I don't know that we're always communicating with residents. I don't know, I had asked about it a while ago, I don't know why we're not putting out some type of a survey and gathering feedback on services that are provided to the city and what people think are going really well, and what are rooms for improvement. And I don't understand how we we can serve the public if we're not listening or gaining that input in some capacity. 